Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today we are continuing to showcase the collection of Marine Captain Devil Fruits by investigating the cult classic famous Sabi Sabi no Mi. The Sabi Sabi no Mi is a Paramecia type fruit that allows its user to inflict rust upon various metallic items, given the caveat that the user is touching them. So very, very specific power there, having been consumed by Marine Captain Shu, and the fruit made its first appearance known to us during the Enisobi arc. Sabi Sabi no Mi takes its name directly from the Japanese word for rust being Sabi. Rather interestingly though, the kanji for rust, like most kanji, have multiple readings, with Sabi being the kunyomi reading. However, in this case, the onyomi reading is actually Shu, which is the name of the user of the fruit, which is a cool little language-based decision made by Oda there. As for the boring and straightforward world of English, both Viz and Funimation translated this rather appropriately as the rust rust fruit. So as displayed in the series, this fruit gives the user the ability to very rapidly rust any applicable metal that they touch, so rapidly that it becomes dust in the blink of an eye. However, what do I mean there by applicable metals? Well, you may initially think that the Sabi Sabi no Mi more or less makes the user immune to any form of metal. And I'm here to burst that bubble pretty quickly, because while all metals are susceptible to some form of corrosion, they are certainly not all susceptible to rust. And this is because rust itself is technically hydrated iron oxide, and as a result, a metal does need to contain a certain amount of iron within it in order to open up the doors to rusty greatness. Gold, silver, and platinum, for example, are pure metals, and such will never rust, or in the case of those three, even oxidize it all easily. But even other metals such as copper, brass, bronze, and aluminium will not rust because they all contain a negligible amount of iron. So perhaps the user of the Sabi Sabi no Mi would be able to take advantage of that minuscule amount of iron and open up a rust gateway of sorts. But if real life is anything to go by, and yes, in a manga with a magical fruit, it certainly isn't, but it would stand to reason that at the very least, the Sabi Sabi no Mi would be much less effective against these metals. And to top things off, in these modern times, there is even a process to protect both steel and iron from rusting, which is galvanization, in which you hot dip your metal and coat it in a layer of zinc to protect protect it from said rusting. Of everything I've mentioned so far, I suspect that the user of the Sabi Sabi no Mi may still be able to penetrate this and cause huge amounts of damage to these materials, but it's difficult to judge its level of effectiveness. With that said, I'm not so sure this is a huge problem in the One Piece world as they seem very iron based. So a user of this fruit within this context would still likely become quite powerful in that respect. But at the same time, not really because the large majority of this world is water, islands, wood, and all of your classic non-metallic materials. I mean, really your ideal opponent in this world is probably the largest users of metal, which are the marines, because you'd be able to rust their guns and swords and whatever else they're using, which is a bit awkward for Mr. Shu given that he is a captain in their employ. With that said, Shu made pretty fantastic use of the fruit during the Anisobi arc, when he essentially hard countered Zoro and even managed to destroy one of his Mato great swords, Yubashiri. So look, I'd say that Shu certainly knows how to position himself in the most advantageous spot possible, very much playing towards his strength, which amounts to being the bane of all non-Haki using swordsmen. Unfortunately, outside of a non-speaking cameo on One Piece film Z, Shu has not appeared again in the series, and so it becomes quite difficult to judge his proficiency with the Sabi Sabi no Mi, especially in the post time skip era. But if this is all we have to go on, then I'd say that Chu certainly does do good with the things. Now, as for some form of awakening, here we have what I would call a non-standard Paramecia, and these are always very tricky to predict because I doubt that it would turn out to be something as simple as gaining the ability to rust your environment. What I would hope is that awakening the Sabi Sabi no Mi allows its user to take the fruit beyond rust and into the realm of corrosion in general, thus making it effective against any metal rather than just non-galvanized iron, steel and the like. Perhaps an awakened user could even develop some sort of corrosion radius, whereby they can dissolve anything within a certain distance of them, somewhat like creating a room with the Ope Ope no Mi, except very, very corrosive. Some other miscellaneous things to consider when becoming a rust human. If you're an anime only watcher, you may also be wondering why I haven't mentioned a particular ability that was shown with this fruit, which was that it could go on to rust non-metallic objects, and that Chu even had a brief scene where he began to rust Zoro's arm, which I don't know, may make some sort of sense because there's a lot of iron in humans, but it is non-canon. And as such, I cannot state with any certainty that the fruit actually functions in this manner. If it did, then that's absolutely massive and this fruit would step up a few tiers, but uh, what can you do? So I bet coming into this video, you wouldn't have thought that I would prefer to become balls with the Berry Berry no Mi rather than partake in the Sabi Sabi no Mi, but that's very much the situation we find ourselves in. Rather annoyingly, the fact that it specifically focuses on rust rather than corrosion in general is actually a massive detractor of the fruit in my eyes anyway. It also doesn't help that when the fruit is effective, it's purely destructive. You can't really create anything with your powers, and so this fruit only goes on to serve a very niche sector. I don't see much benefit at all for the average person in consuming this fruit, which is unfortunate because I do quite like the idea and uniqueness of it, but I just cannot bring myself to recommend eating it over most fruits in the series. And with that, we are going to commit the Sabi Sabi no Mi to the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia. Next week, we are reaching the heights of obscurity, and we are going to be examining the only devil fruit featured in the manga that was not shown in the anime. Sort of like a reverse filler fruit, I guess, being the Shari Shari no Mi.
If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon, because the support of all of your amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. Also, do check out my Teespring store if you're interested in shirts, hoodies, and other miscellaneous items, with the proceeds going directly to support the channel as well. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the Sabi Sabi no me. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time. So you know how in the Marines, every commissioned officer is granted their own delightful signature jacket bearing the ever important Seigi Kanji, meaning justice. What well, with that in mind, who can tell me what's wrong with this anime screenshot? That's right, it would appear that similarly to justice, the animator is blind.